Welcome, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Cameron Delano, Security Architect with F5, and in this video we'll be going over the GraphQL inspection capabilities of the F5 Distributed Cloud Web App and API Protection Service. Throughout this video, we'll walk you through how easy it is to configure GraphQL inspection to protect against batch and deep recursion query attacks, as well as limiting information disclosure by blocking introspection. We'll also configure the web application firewall to protect against injection and command execution attacks. We'll finish up with showing the protection in action and examining the logs. Let's go ahead and get started. To start with, we need to configure GraphQL inspection and WAF on our load balancer. Once we're logged into the console, the first thing we do is click on the web app and API protection tile. For this demo, we have a distributed cloud load balancer that is fronting the damn vulnerable GraphQL application. We have no protection configured, so it's completely open to attack. Luckily, enabling the WAF and GraphQL inspection on the platform is extremely easy. Click on the three dots next to our load balancer and select Manage Configuration. And once the configuration page renders, click Edit Configuration on the top right. And using the menu to the left, navigate to Web Application Firewall, and once there, use the WAF drop-down menu and select Enable. Next, click the Enable drop-down and choose Add Item. This brings us to the App Firewall configuration page. And once there, we give it a name, and in the Enforcement Mode drop-down, we choose Blocking. For the purposes of this demo, the default configuration will be sufficient. We just hit the Continue button at the bottom of the page to return to our Load Balancer configuration. Now we'll configure GraphQL inspection. GraphQL is an open source query language in runtime developed to provide a more efficient and flexible approach to data fetching and manipulation compared to traditional REST APIs. It allows clients to precisely request the data they need. This granularity allows for efficient data retrieval and eliminates problems such as overfetching. To create our policy under GraphQL inspection, we click Configure. Once the page renders, select Add Item to create our rule. Here we have a few options to choose from. We can specify the domain to enable inspection on, either any exact value or suffix value. Next, we can specify the path of the endpoint. Here we'll leave it at the default of GraphQL. For HTTP method, we'll change it to post and then move on to our settings. Here we can set the maximum length for the query. We'll leave this at 5,000 bytes. For the maximum structure depth for the query, we'll change this to 5, and for the maximum number of batched queries in a request, we'll accept a default of 10. Now that brings us to our introspection settings. Introspection is a feature of GraphQL that allows clients to query the schema of the API at runtime. If not properly protected, unauthorized users or malicious actors could abuse this feature to gain insights into the API's internals, potentially exposing security vulnerabilities or sensitive data. We'll go ahead and leave this disabled so any introspection queries will be blocked. Now we click Apply at the bottom of the page to finish our rule, and again to save it to the load balancer config. Finally, at the bottom of the page, we select Save and Exit to finish configuration. And that's it. It's that easy. Now let's run a few attacks and check our logs. Here you can see we're hitting the load balancer fronting our application. We'll go ahead and begin with the attacks that will be caught by inspection. First, we'll attempt a batch query attack. This is an attack that can be used to perform a denial of service on the application. It's usually done by sending a batch of resource-intensive queries that can overwhelm the service. In this case, we'll be sending a batch of 11 system update queries. Since our batch request maximum was set at 10, this should be blocked. Another type of denial of service can be attempted using a deep recursion attack. This attack uses the types owner and paste, with each of them referencing each other. We set our max structure depth to 5, so this is blocked as well. Now on to our introspection query. Here you can see that we're blocking that as expected, protecting against unauthorized data exposure. Next, we'll run the attacks that get caught by our WAF policy. First, we have a cross-site scripting attack. Here we're presented with our default blocking page stating that a request was rejected. Next is a log injection attack. 
this request is rejected as well. And finally, we'll attempt the command execution. In this case, we're trying to get some system information, and that request also fails. Now let's take a look at our dashboard and security analytics. Here in our consolidated dashboard, we can see that our attacks have caused the platform to determine that the threat to our application is high. Now in our application-specific dashboard, we can see it broken down by domain, event types, attack sources, and location. This is further broken down by signature and rule violations. Now in the security analytics, we can see the attacks we ran. Here we have our command execution with all relevant data, including signature ID and matching info. Next, we have our two injection attacks with their specifics. These were caught by our default WAF policy. Now we move on to the attacks prevented by our inspection rules. First, we have our introspection query, classified as an information leakage attack type. Next, we have our deep recursion attack, letting us know that the attack exceeded the max depth of five and is parser attack. And finally, we have our batch query attack, telling us that it was a batched query of 11 and exceeded our limit of 10. I hope you've enjoyed this quick demo of the GraphQL protection capabilities of the F5 distributed cloud platform. Since this development in 2012, adoption of GraphQL has witnessed a steady growth year over year. The efficiency and power of the API has made it a popular choice with many development teams. With an ever-increasing threat service and a high potential for attack, organizations must prioritize safeguarding their users by investing in robust security. Thank you, and thanks for tuning in.